the external brain. Here's the scoop. It's a notebook. That's it. <laughs> it's a notebook filled with notes that you took. Most people put their external brain in a three ring binder. Here is one of my awesome and most favorite students. She donated her external brain to me. That was very nice of her. Um, other students <laughs> won't even let me borrow their external brain to let other people look at because they are so attached to their external brains. And I feel like <laughs> that. I totally get it. Um, that is awesome. Sometimes they'll come in and show it to us. But some of the external brains are truly phenomenal. But they don't have to be. They're notes. I had a student once do an external brain. I mean, my brain always thinks it should be a three ring binder because then it's more flexible. But this student did an external brain. I'm not kidding you. It was in a notebook that was probably this size. Like, it was, it was probably smaller than that thing. It was tiny. It was like the craziest little tiny notebook. And he wrote like, I almost needed a microscope, not a microscope, a magnifying glass, a telescope to see his writing because he wrote so small. But he, it was like, it was beautiful. Like it was, it was like a work of art because he did all this really fine work in it. Awesome. I really do not care at all. If you take notes in your classes, you've done an external brain. There are a couple of rules. First of all, uh, you can't take text. Like you, can, you couldn't take a book and copy the pages out of the book or print a website and put it into your external brain. Everything that's in it has to be created by you. So uh, taking my lecture notes, like that packet, you can't put the packet into your external brain. You can put, um, you can rewrite it. I don't know why you would, but you could. You can rewrite pieces from your textbook. Again, I don't know why you would, but you, you could do that. You can put in it anything that you want as long as you did it. The exception to that is images. You can actually use um, images like this. I mean, this is an anatomy external brain. I don't even know if you can see that very well. There, look, you can see it now. This person, who I love, took pictures from a coloring book. She cut out the labeled parts so that it, none of the labels, like the images didn't have pre-typed labels on them. She took those parts out and then she labeled them with her hand and her pencil, and that totally works. But if there's a label already on it, it needs to come out. You can white it out, whatever. That's usually less important in physio than in anatomy because um, images aren't, like it's better to build your own images because most of what we're talking about are processes. It's not um, naming parts, which it's sometimes handy to have a blank um, diagram to name parts. So anyway, the external brain seriously is super straightforward. Now, why would you do it? Well, you're going to get points for doing it. I'm going to look at your external brain. I won't grade it for correctness, but I'll look at it. And um, I'm going to look at it every time you have an exam because you also have external brain exams. And this is why you do it, because you can use your external brain on the external brain exams. So those are basically open note exams. Um, but again, it has to be legal content in the external brain. Um, I think that, I think it's super straightforward. So don't stress about the external brain. That one is fun and straightforward. Don't stress about the integration project either, but let's talk about that one. 